Raspberry or cheese filled? <laughs> oh, neither for me, thank you. I don't eat food. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in WandaVision episodes 1 and 2. This is what I just said. What's wrong with you, son? Have you got a screw loose? Oh, no, sir. The screws all tightened, sir. <laughs> Breakfast for dinner. How very, uh... European. I'm doing it. For this list, we're looking at Easter eggs and little details that you might have overlooked in the first two episodes of this wicked Disney Plus series. Be sure to watch the episodes before proceeding because there will be a few spoilers. Are there any details we missed? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, the number 23. Oh yes, the heart. <laughs> Throughout the first episode, Wanda and Vision attempt to figure out why August 23rd is marked off on their calendar with a heart doodle. Wanda thinks it's their anniversary, Vision thinks it's because his boss Mr. Hart is coming over for dinner, and sitcom hijinks ensue. I think the best course of action is to impress the wife. And I think the best course of action is to impress the husband. <laughs> the number 23 stands out for a variety of reasons. For starters, there's the 23 Enigma, which has inspired numerous interpretations, theories, and beliefs. In every case, the number 23 carries an important significance. In WandaVision, it could be alluding to the strangeness of the circumstances, something sinister going on behind the scenes, or bad luck looming around the corner. Or maybe it's because the Infinity Saga was comprised of 23 movies, and WandaVision commences Phase 4. That man through there is my boss, Mr. Hart! And his dear lady wife, Mrs. Hart, the heart on the calendar was an abbreviation. Number 9. Allusions to Classic TV Shows even if you didn't grow up with a black and white TV, anyone can tell that the first two episodes channel classic sitcoms from the 50s and early 60s. What do you say to silver dollar pancakes, crispy hash browns, bacon eggs, freshly squeezed orange juice, and black coffee? I say, oh, I don't eat food. What younger audiences might not realize is that the satire here isn't too far off from actual sitcoms that came out during television's early decades. The fantasy situation comedy arguably started with My Favorite Martian, where a stranded alien befriends a human reporter. This paved the way for other quirky sitcoms like I Dream of Genie, in which an astronaut finds a genie in a bottle. <laughs> WandaVision is kind of like a gender-swapped My Living Doll, where a man took in an android named Rhoda. Suddenly, two Avengers living in suburbia doesn't sound so contrived. It says here I can cut down the prep time with a meat tenderizer. Excellent plan. Where's the tenderizer? I'm looking at it. Number 8. A Bewitching Connection Although the first two episodes borrow from several shows, they have the most in common with Bewitched. Like Samantha Stevens, Wanda Maximoff is a magical woman trying to blend in as a normal suburban housewife. Episode 2's intro even replicates the animated opening credits of Bewitched. WandaVision. WandaVision. But the similarities run deeper than that. The second episode notably commences with Wanda and Vision sleeping in separate beds, a la Ricky and Lucy Ricardo. It isn't long until they merge the beds into one and get under the covers. Wanda Dove. Yes, dear. Get the light. <laughs> Mary Kay and Johnny was the first show to depict a husband and wife sharing a bed. However, Bewitched marked the first time that two TV actors who weren't married in real life played a couple that shared a bed. My turn. Number 7. Wanda's Evolving Wardrobe While the debut episodes are similar in tone, the characters and environments evolve in subtle ways. Nowhere is this more apparent than in Wanda's wardrobe. Throughout the first episode, Wanda primarily wears a dress akin to most housewives from classic sitcoms. I might have a better idea. <laughs> in the second episode, she trades in her apron for a pair of pants. Wanda's outfit is brought up several times, making her feel like an outsider. Wanda, hmm. can I give you a bit of friendly advice? Is it about the way I'm dressed? Yes, but it's too late for that. This isn't too different from the minor controversy Mary Tyler Moore's Capri pants ignited on The Dick Van Dyke Show. While Moore was not the first actress to wear pants on television, she certainly popularized the look and, in due course, changed the television dress code. And, like Moore before her, Wanda is a true trailblazer. Hey, those pants are peachy Katie. Do you really think so? The other ladies are in skirts, I was worried. Number 6. Dennis the Mailman 
WandaVision is full of eccentric characters who may or may not be what they seem, including one mild-mannered postal worker. And we're not talking about Willy Lumpkin. Stick him up. <laughs> Don't shoot, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> Dennis the Mailman is played by Amos Glick, who you might recognize from another MCU show. Actually, you probably don't because he was only on screen for a few seconds. In the season 7 premiere of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Glick pops up as a waiter from the 1930s. Sorry. Could there be a deeper connection between Dennis and this random waiter? Meh, nah, probably not. The casting director has probably figured that nobody would notice. Either way, we're keeping our eye on you, Dennis. <laughs> 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 Number 5. Baby June In the first episode, Vision reads the Westview Herald when Wanda accidentally levitates a dish into his head. My wife and her flying saucers. My husband and his indestructible head. While it's hard to make out, the paper's top headline reads, Little Baby June's first word tickles mother. We guess it was a slow news day, but this headline could be hinting at another character's arrival. In the comics, Wanda isn't the only character who's gone by Scarlet Witch. June Covington is primarily known as Toxie Doxy, but when Norman Osborn assembled his Dark Avengers for the second time, June became the team Scarlet Witch. Granted, June is a common name and maybe we're reading too much into this. Still, one can only hope that we'll see Scarlet Witch fight Dark Scarlet Witch in the foreseeable future. Number 4. House of M Wanda ends up making breakfast for dinner, but wine goes well with any meal. She selects a French wine called Maison du Mépris, which translates to House of Contempt. From what I've seen here tonight, you can barely keep it together. I mean, look around, there's all this chaos going on in your household. While this could carry multiple meanings, the wine's name likely reflects Wanda's emotions after losing vision in Infinity War. The enlarged M in mépris is especially noteworthy. If you drop the rest of the word, the name translates to House of M. The comic savvy crowd will recognize this as the title of a 2005 storyline where Scarlet Witch endures a mental breakdown. Seeking to bring back her children, Wanda uses her powers to warp reality, with catastrophic results. Since episode 2 concluded with Wanda pregnant, we can expect more nods to House of M going forward. <gasps> Vision. This is really happening. Number 3. Agnes. Played by Katherine Hahn, Agnes is portrayed as the typical sitcom neighbor who frequently drops by unannounced. Forgive me for not stopping by sooner to welcome you to the block. My mother in law was in town, so I wasn't. She's almost as nosy as Gladys Kravitz, but we suspect that Agnes is keeping a few secrets of her own. While the verdict is still out on her, Agnes could be an alias for Agatha Harkness. What kind of housewife would I be if I didn't have a gourmet meal for four just lying about the place? In the comics, Agatha is a witch who makes it through the Salem witch trials. She passes on her knowledge of magic to Wanda, becoming her mentor. Through Agatha's teachings, Wanda manages to become pregnant with Vision's children. Based on the first two episodes, we'd be shocked if Agatha didn't factor into Wanda's warped reality. And Agnes seems like the most likely candidate to be the witch. You didn't answer the back door for your upside down cake. <gasps> oh, hi. Uh... Who was that? A Telegram. Salesman. Number two, Strucker. Both episodes feature fake commercials with actors Victoria Blade and Ithamar Enriquez. The first advertisement is for a toaster made by Stark Industries. The all new Toastmate 2000 by Stark Industries. Blade almost looks like Lucy Ricardo during her Vita Mita Vegemin commercial, albeit not nearly as inebriated. The two return in a second ad for a Strucker watch. We are sure you recognize the watch's Hydra symbol, but you might have forgotten who Baron Wolfgang von Strucker is. Played by Thomas Kretschmann, Strucker made his MCU debut in The Winter Soldier, where he was seen observing Wanda and Pietro. It's not a world of spies anymore, not even a world of heroes. This is the Age of Miracles, Doctor. Age of Ultron opens with the Avengers raiding Strucker's Hydra facility. Strucker dies by Ultron's hand, but could this ad be hinting at his return? It's only a matter of time until we find out. Well, it makes sense he'd go to them. They have someone in common. Not anymore. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number 1. Who's the Beekeeper? In a series full of bewildering moments, the biggest question mark so far has got to be the Beekeeper's identity. At the end of Episode 2, this mysterious figure emerges from a manhole with a strange emblem on his back and insects swarming around him. What is that? Wonder. The concealed beekeeper was played by Zach Henry, who's worked in the stunt department on various MCU projects. The symbol suggests that he's with S.W.O.R.D., Sentient Weapon Observation Response Division. This agency is the space division of S.H.I.E.L.D., handling extraterrestrial threats. Of course, we're tempted to go out on a limb and say it's Fritz von Meyer, aka Swarm. Stark only plays with technology. I am the technology. Yeah, it's a stretch, but a Nazi scientist made out of bees wouldn't feel out of place here. No. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.